there. I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I am excited to have you here with me today for kind of a fun video. Now, I have to tell you that I decorate heavily for Christmas every year and I have ever since the kids were very small, probably even before I had kids, Christmas was huge for me, but I was not like, well, like Alan's mother, Darlene, my mother-in-law, and she decorated for every single holiday all through the years. I never did that. I, I didn't do anything but Christmas and maybe a little bit at Thanksgiving. However, I loved Christmas so much that I would really put Christmas up the week before Thanksgiving. And when people would come over to eat, I would have Christmas all laid out on Thanksgiving. That's how much I love Christmas. So this year, back in July, I decided to decorate for the 4th of July. And I realized that it was really very fun. And it just made the house seem kind of festive. And we have lived in this house for 11 years. And for those of you who follow my channel, you may know that I love decorating houses. And in the first maybe 30 years of our marriage, no, 20, 25 years, Alan and I lived in like 18 different houses because we would buy what we could afford and then we would fix it up and resell it in a year or two. We always kept the kids in the same school district, but we kind of used our homes as a way to flip them and to gain wealth. And we ended up with a paid house several houses ago. And so that was our way of kind of making money. So anyway, I think that having lived 11 years in this house, Things get a little dull and I don't have my thrill of buying a new house anymore. We're going to stay put here, but every holiday I've been decorating. So I decorated on 4th of July and then I decorated in fall, which was unusual for me because orange is not my favorite color. Of course, I did Christmas. Then I did Valentine's Day and I'll link that video below. And now I'm doing St. Patrick's Day. And I had always thought I would never do St. Patty's Day. And one of the reasons is, number one, I think the decor generally is kind of kitschy and those funky looking elves and stuff like that. I just thought, ooh, that is ugly. And I wasn't thrilled about the green color. And also, quite honestly, to me, it has a connotation to green beer and drinking too much. And when I was in my early 20s, I did that to excess. And I will say, for those of you who followed my channel, you know that drinking became an issue for me. And 21 years ago in January, in fact, January 6th, 21 years ago, I had my absolute last drink of any kind. And if you'd like to see a video about that and my struggles with alcohol in my early years and my triumph, I guess, over alcohol, then I would love to share that information with you because I think it might be helpful to some of you out there who may not even really be aware that you have a drinking problem because it could sneak up on you very suddenly. But anyway, I diverge. So I decided to do St. Patrick's decor because when I started looking around at it, number one, it was all green and had a lot of little green coins, which I'll show you in my house. And so it had a connotation to money. And then a lot of the new decor has a connotation to being lucky. I guess because if you're lucky, you find the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And the idea of having the word lucky all around the house and green money lying around, all of a sudden I just thought, you know, I could spend a few weeks feeling fortunate and blessed and lucky. Well, anyway, I have gotten really, really chatty here. So let me show you my St. Patrick's Day decor. Okay, I'm starting outside the house. And right now I have ordered a St. Patrick's Day wreath, but it is not here yet. So I just have the basic spring wreath. There is the requisite Amazon package on my front porch, as I always seem to have stuff coming in from Amazon. But I'll just have the St. Patty's wreath out here and I'll show you my living room. Here we go. And I have to say, I wasn't used to the idea of having green in here, but I'm getting used to it. So I'll just give you a pan around the room. This is the little niche. And basically I have the same format for decorating every holiday season. And that is that I buy ribbons and put them in about the same places, but different colored ribbons for each different season. And I did the green polka dots here. And there are the willows that are always in there. And then it says, shake your shamrock. And I got that at Michael's this year. There's the master. And there's a welcome sign I got from Hobby Lobby, which is green with a little shamrock. I never do understand why they don't make it a four leaf clover though. But anyway, and I just got this in today and I bought two of these. There is one in the kitchen too. And basically you can see the green there, but these are like $16 from Amazon. And look how nice they are. They have the little tassels. And so it's a little extra detail, but I think that is so pretty. And there's looking back at the front door. And then I have the dog that always has a ribbon on it. And what I do is two sets of ribbons. And I liked it that these ribbons had black in them since my living room has a lot of black. 
and there's the dog. And the dog has polka spots. Oh wait, no, that's plaid. <laughs> that is plaid, Beth. Okay, and here is the dining area. And I have the wild curtains and then the touches of green, which I wasn't sure I would really like the green, but it reminds me of money. And I don't mind that because money is a good thing in our lives, isn't it? And I like it that there are little monies all over the table because it kind of reminds us that we are lucky. We're lucky to have a table to eat at. We're lucky to have great food. We're lucky to have money. It is wonderful. And then there is the buffet. And again, I did the bows on the lamps and then the little polka dot ones. I think that's a one and a half inch ribbon. And the dog, I think is two and a half. I think he's two and a half. And so that's how I do that ribbon and those ribbons. And then the little shamrocks, I got those from Hobby Lobby. And they don't look very good in the store, but I think they add a little touch there, which is nice. So there is the dining room. And let's go ahead and walk into the kitchen. There's a little polka spot ribbon there. And then there's a little guy I got from Amazon. He came in a set of two, and the other one is on the mantle, but I think they're so cute. These little leprechauns or gnomes seem to be pretty popular for the holidays because at Easter, I noticed, they are also bringing out the gnomes, which is different. Okay, this is where we live, mostly. The family lives here. This is where we eat dinner every night. And all I did was I ordered green napkins from Amazon. I got a set of 12. So that was six napkins for the dining table in the living room and four napkins here. And then I got this just at Michael's. I was in the other day and they had 30% off, which was wonderful. And I'm trying to see, there's not a whole lot of St. Patrick's in here. I've got more of these monies and I ordered these from Amazon. The little shamrocks in there and money. And I like those. I like the little shamrock glittery things there. Everybody thinks that they're chocolate when they walk in though, and they try to unwrap them and eat them, which they're disappointed that they can't. And this is the area that we pretty much live whenever we're in the family room, which is most of the time. And I love the theme of Lucky. And so there's the mantle with a little Lucky banner there. And there's the little, the little leprechaun, I guess. I don't like the kitschy leprechauns. I just like things being a little more Oh, words in the green is fine. And those were pillow covers. And they were like four for maybe 10 or $12. But I thought that was really, really cute. And you do have to buy an 18 inch pillow form, but that works, it's pretty easy. Here is a look again at the entire sitting area with the green. And here, I actually had a picture sitting on a stand here. But for Valentine's Day, I removed that picture and I can't find it now. I'm disorganized. But anyway, I love the fact, lucky me, lucky you, lucky us, and lucky, because I do feel so lucky. And I just like this. Seeing the word lucky everywhere just reminds me that I am fortunate. Uh, and I love the green too. And speaking of lucky, I got this in the mail today from Teddy Blake, and I absolutely love it. And I will be doing a video soon about what I keep in my purse, because I've gotten very organized about how I keep my purse. I was not organized before at all. I used to keep like barrels and barrels of things in my purse and you never could find anything. And now I've become very organized and I have a system to keep my purse that way. So that purse will be starring in a video and oh my, it is so quality and the leather smells so good. I can hardly wait to share that with you. That is a look at my home on St. Patty's Day. And I guess that Easter is coming up April 4th. So this will only live here for another couple of weeks. Then I will change to Easter decor. And I really do like the Easter decor too. Thank you so much for visiting my home. I really, really appreciate having you here with me. And I hope you have a wonderful St. Patty's Day. Okay, that was a look at my decorating for St. Patrick's Day. And within the next few weeks, I'll post another video about my spring decor. I'm calling it spring decor instead of Easter just because I am having my St. Pat's Day decor up so long that if I call my Easter decor spring decor and focus on that theme, I can leave that decor in my house longer. But if you'd like to see that video, please go ahead and subscribe. And when you click that little bell, that will just notify you of that video and my future videos. Mostly I do anti-aging videos for women who are 50 plus, but occasionally I do fun things like home decor too. Okay, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day, and normally I read from a positive thinking card deck, 
But recently I've decided just to share with you information that I am learning on my journey in life. And I have been listening to lots and lots of audiobooks about goal setting, positive thinking, success, that kind of thing. And also just being happy because I think each of us on a daily basis need to work to make ourselves happy. And they always say that when you're on an airplane in an emergency to take care of yourself first before helping your kids or the people around you. And that's the way it is with happiness. If you can make yourself happy, if you can feel great about yourself inside, then think of all the wonderful positive things you can kind of share with others all through your life. So this is my little positive thinking thought for the day. And that is that we all have big goals. We have big goals. And sometimes we see those goals and we just think, oh my gosh, maybe I would never get there. So maybe I just won't do that. Well, an example of one of my goals that kind of goes along with this theme is that there's another YouTuber that I would love to do a collab with. And I really admire her and I love her channel. And so I really wanted to reach out to her and I kept thinking, you know, maybe she wouldn't want to do a collab with me. And in fact, I even had a dream about her in which for some reason I was in a very grungy set of pajamas and I was out and about like out like in a restaurant and there she was and she came up to me and she said, oh, you look a little awful. And I realized that she didn't like me. And I think that reflected my fears about reaching out to her that maybe she would not want to do a collab with me. Then I watched this video and I think it was on Evan Carmichael's channel and he's a wonderful success happiness related speaker and I'll link his video for you below. But basically he said, whenever you have a big goal, don't look at it as just success if you make that goal. I mean, certainly that's nice to succeed in that way. But he said, if you have a big goal, look at doing the work as the components of success. So in other words, with regard to that example of reaching out to that YouTuber, the success for me and for you, I guess, is in doing that thing that we're a little bit afraid of, going for it, actually accomplishing that particular step on the way to that big goal. And I did that today. I sent her an email and I haven't heard anything back and I may not hear anything back. Maybe she doesn't get the video. Maybe she doesn't like me. You know, that's no big deal. That result is not where the success is. The success is in the fact that I overcame my fear. I did what it took and I accomplished that. So just for today, if you have a big goal out there, try to just break it down into the steps that you need to take and then consider yourself a success when you take those steps. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.